drop something. Hold on. Hold on. I'll be back. I collect a lot of the useless shit that I don't need. <laughs> now, the whole, my whole idea behind, kind of like why I wanted to do a video like this is, I got a lot of nerd stuff that I kind of just keep around. Like I have some things kind of put up for all myself and little things here and there, but what, what kind of gave me the idea to kind of go about this and look like this, I recently started replaying Kingdom Hearts and I just recently beat all of the first Kingdom Hearts game and like uh, got in a topic with one of my roommates about like how I have put way too much time and money into these games um, throughout the years and like I uh, in like high school and middle school i was known to like oh he, he's all obsessed with kingdom hearts he's all into it yada yada friends gave me shit for it because it wasn't final fantasy it was disney mixed with it but whatever i loved it i like it i still do I still like it a lot third game i loved a lot of fun but it got me thinking of how much of like random crap i have and it's not just kingdom hearts crap <laughs> there's a lot more other stuff on it too and so i kind of want to just uh share my weird nerd collection with you guys on the internet to kind of learn a little bit more about me we've got some new subscribers which we immensely appreciate you know we're trying to grow the channel more uh communicate a lot with people you know make great content so everyone can enjoy what we're working and having more people there to talk to on streams and get connected with all of you so like show a little bit of my side of things and what i have um so i'm uh, first things I'm gonna start with I I have a weird thing with like a soda collection I have a small soda collection of like different flavors of Mountain Dew mainly them being the like voodoo flavors let me let me get let me start getting those give me a second So back in 2019, back in 2019, Mountain Dew had released a new um, flavored drink, a mystery flavor, um, uh, called yeah, Mount, Mountain Dew Voodoo. See, I have the old, the very first 2019 Mountain Dew bottle. It's a little. Looking at the other Mountain Dew Voodoo's, this one's a little miscolored, and the bottle's a little kind of fucked up um but yeah i got oh and the label's a little ripped it's kind of messed up but uh i got 2019 in a bottle i got 2020 in a bottle it looks kind of fleshy too it's weird 20, 2020 in a bottle and then um 2021 Mountain Dew Voodoo in the bottle. I don't know, is that focusing? Focus. Oh, it's still not focusing. Oh, you can kind of see it though. 2021 in the bottle. And then 2022. Or is that 2020? Yeah, 2022. And then this year they just came out with another. The 2023 number five Voodoo. Um, so I got these five different flavors i also got the voodoo i got a can version of the of the last one um i couldn't find any cans of like there was a can version made for the 2020 that i had but something happened to the can um it might have happened at the same time i i don't know that 
Dr. Pepper had released this flavor, the Dr. Pepper Dark Berry. The very first one was for like the Spider-Man films, and I had gotten my hands on one of those, but I had it sitting behind my Xbox, and my heat jets were hitting directly on that thing, and it exploded and got everywhere. I think that's also what might have happened to that Mountain Dew can. But um, I have other Mountain Dew flavors, like the Mountain Dew Flaming Hot, and then Mountain Dew Flaming Hot in a can. <laughs> um, and the other one, the last Mountain Dew soda I have was, uh, it was only available to buy online. It was a Mountain Dew Typhoon. It's kind of like a pineapple kind of drink, a pineapple citrus drink, which is pretty good. Uh, I don't know how many of these he made, but they, they didn't release those ones in stores. Oh, I do have it. I, I do have a. 2020 can <laughs> and this this one was my favorite flavor this one tasted like skittles the second voodoo i loved it it was so good um but last but not least the last thing i have uh is a crystal pepsi from when it was brought back to the bottles and this one's kind of <laughs> this one's kind of messed up too um but starting with the sodas here and looking at all the sodas i wanted to um it this is something i really don't want to do <laughs> but if this video can get and i'm shooting for a higher number here because we've never gotten like this many likes before but if this video gets 100 likes i will do a video of me trying all these flavors as of right now uh out of straight out of these bottles uh just to kind of get a remnant of what it tasted like before but yeah if this video gets 100 likes i'll, I'll do that um Speaking of trying drinks, I did find a couple of drinks here that I wanted to try. Um, I do, I really like G Fuel. Uh, I like G Fuel a lot, and they, uh, G Fuel released uh, Moist Critical, and they, they released a flavor for him called Divine Peach. And uh, I looked it up, it's supposed to be some kind of uh, heat dragon fruit kiwi flavor and i haven't had it before and i really like g fuel i like a lot of their flavors the one of the most recent ones i tried was their spinal fluid with the attack on titan and i really like that one a lot so i'm gonna give this a shot here let's see that's, that's not bad that's not bad um I think it's supposed to be like the whatever the peach flavor is supposed to be. It's not. It's not exactly peach. It's good though. It's it kind of um I don't know why it's making me think of it, but the I can't remember the name of the fruits, but the the little um red kind of fuzzy fruit things that you would peel off the skin and eat the inside. It was kind of like a soft green. It kind of tastes like that. It tastes like one of those. I don't know why, but it, that's what it gets to me. But the other one I got, I saw while I was at the store where I got this G Fuel, um, I saw this prime flavor that I hadn't seen anywhere else, not in any of the gas stations or any of the other stores. I only saw it at this store. Um, it was a, a local GNC, um, but they had this prime glowberry. And I hadn't tried this one before, so I wanted to give it a shot here and see what that tasted like, too. Let's see. <clears throat> Gotta stay hydrated. Damn it. It's not bad. That's, that's not bad. sour apple almost but not quite well it's just more like apple like a green apple i would say if you got a green apple it kind of tastes like that um but moving on to all the other little items that we're looking at today um when i get invested into something i tend to collect a lot of like 
that universe's items or merchandise and that kind of stuff. My cat's trying to get me to, don't attack me. Uh, my cat's trying to get me to say something here. But, uh, speaking of the first one, Kingdom Hearts, um, going into the, some of the smaller stuff here, I do collect some Funko Pops. Most of my Funko Pops are Kingdom Hearts. I've got a few that are like uh, My Hero Academia, but a majority, 80% of my Funko Pops are Kingdom Hearts based ones. And I got like, I believe I have most of them. The only one of them I don't have is this uh, Sora that's riding the Heartless Wave. And I'm upset that I didn't get that one, but that one's expensive. But I have a good collection of Funko Pops and that one's my favorite the little the neatest um I have like anywhere between 15 or 20 of them in my closet and I have it I don't have a space to put them up we live in a uh two bedroom apartment we have four people living in this apartment which is why like my videos are kind of wonky it has different backgrounds all the time because we have different spots that we'll sit and record depending on what we're doing and what's going on with the day like the uh, one of the last video was in my room but uh, I don't have the time or space to do it in there today, so I'm doing it all out here. Um, more on the Kingdom Hearts stuff. I got ah, favorite Keyblade in that series is the Oath Keeper. I have this like foam Oath Keeper that I keep hung up on my wall here. I, I, don't know, I like it. I like messing with it. You know, I pull it down every now and then and be like, ah, but yeah, it's got a like a nice foam. Oath Keeper, and then I kind of go with it. My friend actually got this for me for Christmas one year. Um, it's so I think it's supposed to be Oblivion. It's not all like too great. It looks kind of more just like the Kingdom Keeper in black with the Oblivion top and handle, but it's supposed to be the Oblivion Keyblade, and uh, I like it a lot. The only thing I don't like about this is the handle spins. <laughs> spins a lot. I don't know why it spins, why they designed it like that, but it do that. And then, um, out of the Kingdom Hearts stuff, I do have, uh, what's that? A hat. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts hat from Birth by Sleep. But, other than the, those kind of little merchandises there, I spent a lot of money on the games themselves. Uh, as an example, when Kingdom Hearts 3 was coming out, and mind you, I already had Kingdom Hearts 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8 on my uh, on my Xbox. I already had those on my Xbox. PlayStation had released a bundle deal with all three games and Kingdom Hearts 3 for $80 if you bought it on their store. So I ended up buying that. So I got all the games also on my PlayStation and my Xbox. And then I went and pre-ordered the $80 version of Kingdom Hearts 3 from GameStop to get the Steelbook case, which is hiding over there. I just didn't want to dig it out. Along with a fabric poster and a pin, which I'll go over the pin in a minute because that's another obsession that we'll get to here in a bit on, on the video. Uh, but on that alone, with just those items, I had spent... $160 for just the release of Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> and that's not counting like anything I had before like merchandise games I've bought previously and so on and so forth I've I've spent way too much money on Kingdom Hearts and it's ridiculous um going into some of the other items I have here though uh another thing that kind of like I think feeds into the Kingdom Hearts stuff is I do have a uh like Disney fascination more of like Disneyland like the you know like the amusement parks themselves so I have a lot of like different stuff directly from the muse amusement parks like I got um I got pins like I got a Jafar pin a villain Jafar pin from Disneyland and then uh I got a whole a whole, a whole lanyard of these let me kind of get this all pulled up I got just a fat lanyard of different Disney pins here. And I don't know if you want to see them all, but I'll just kind of show some of my favorites that are from there. Um, of, of course, I found a 
Organization 13 Mickey pin from uh, Kingdom Hearts at Disneyland. I had to jump on that right away, right when I saw that. There was no stopping me on getting that one. And then the um, going with the same kind of theming that the Jafar has, uh, Fin, Fin, Fantasmic? Fantasia? I can't remember the exact name of the movie, but the villain, that like demon villain in that movie, the like music based one. I got one of him. I got, I actually got two of him. I got another one there. Um, and then I ended up getting somebody's collection of pins and they had a lot of different old ones. Like uh, there's this one here, uh, Luke's Diner at California Adventure. I'm not quite sure what that was. I hadn't done a, too much research on it, but I thought it was cool because that's like a pin that you're not going to get ever <laughs> anywhere. Um, but yeah, and then I got uh, the... Uh, the Kingdom Hearts pin that came with the steelbook in the game uh, for the third game. Got that on here as well. But then the last one I kind of wanted to look at here was my lightsaber pin that I got from Disneyland when I built the lightsaber. And I like I like that pin a lot. That one's nice. I'm gonna. I want to build more when I go back to Disneyland. Build another lightsaber. Get more of the pins. That kind of stuff. I have another pin on here I want to talk about, but that's gonna be in a bit because that's gonna be more of a, a theme later to look at here. But um, going into the lightsaber stuff though, I got. So here's my lightsaber. I forgot. I I forgot the. I forgot the name of the style my lightsaber is, um, but they're really cool. They're like, they're all like completely, they're completely metal and they come apart so you can like rearrange the pieces and all the other pieces kind of interlock and I'll show you like how that works as well. But it's really neat and taking it all apart here to kind of show you and the middle here. part in the middle is where it holds your kyber crystal to like uh change the colors on the emitter and i'll, I'll show you I'll, I'll cut to uh me putting in a kyber crystal right now so i can show you guys what that looks like It's kind of neat it like glows it glows the color on whatever like crystal you put in there which is really neat um i'll cut to the emitter portion here just gotta put it back together just a moment so the emitter yeah and it makes like the different colors and it has a little sound effect and moves and clash it I'm not sure if you guys are hearing the when it clashes, but um, it's real nice. I like it a lot. Uh, this is probably like one of my favorite experiences I've ever done at Disneyland was make a lightsaber. I'm a huge fan and geek for Star Wars in general. So like putting the two, like some of my favorite things together, like being at Disneyland and then Star Wars, this was a lot of fun and I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, my girlfriend also built own lightsaber um mine's kind of like old republic e kind of based hers is like the new sith kind of big style she she really likes darth maul and she was trying to make it like look like darth maul saber her battery but oh no there it goes but yeah she's got a red kyber crystal in there it looks like it seems like the batteries are doing in it oh yeah that one's really cool and then The coolest part about it too, I think, one of the coolest features is you can like take um, any any different style that they have and they interlock. You can put, you can collect your own like style, basically. Um, when you like get your own different type of saber, they all interlock, still work together and just fine, all operate, um, which I think is really neat just because you're not if you have multiple different types, you can, you're not grounded to just doing the one. 
Uh, of course, in the park, you can only build the one type, which they have lots to choose from, too. But still, like, I find that a really cool feature that they offer that on all of them. And then they got, like, the belt clips and that kind of stuff that hang off the side as well. And still, oh, that's on a plastic grip there. But all metal. All tinks. I don't know if you can hear the tinks, but... But yeah, I really like these. These are a really fun thing that we got to do, all do together, which I thought was neat. And then, let me hold the Uh There's there's an old video on the YouTube channel um, of when I went to Disneyland and I built the Saber. I got that on the channel, so if you want to check that out, uh, that's on there. I'll try to link it here in the video. I haven't linked videos before, so we'll see how that goes. But I'll try to link it here in the top corner. If you guys wanted to look at me building the saber for the first time with my group of friends there. Oh yeah, and then like, uh, so the next thing I have, they have like the pre-built sabers, uh, the legacy sabers. I have the Mace Windu legacy saber. It's my first saber that I got from the parks, was a legacy saber. Um, all it does is undo the purple. Uh, sometimes each individual one has its own kind of sound effects. Like uh, there's a Shadow Maul legacy saber that has its own unique sound effect in regards to uh, Dark Maul's saber there. And then the next thing I really like is they have the holocrons <laughs> that you can get there and you can put like the Kyber crystals inside the holocron and i'll show you guys what that looks like too but turning them on oh my holocron's dead <laughs> i guess that will be for another time but uh turning it on it will glow and it has secret messages in the holocron itself uh just the base form like this um when you'll hold down the sides it will speak to you and it's the obi-wan kenobi's message to the Jedi Order that um, that the Jedi have fallen and did not return to the temple. Um, that's really cool. And then each individual crystal has their own message. Put a Sith crystal into it. Uh, Yoda talks to you and it kind of gives you a hint on the crystal itself. Each individual crystal can be connected to a separate character. Um, as an example here, there's uh, different white crystals. And if you, uh, there's two different types of white crystals. One of it can be Ahsoka. And another one, a different character from uh, the show there. And if you put it in the holocron, whichever character it belongs to will speak to you. And the same thing with the Sith holocron. Uh, I don't have a Sith holocron, but that's my next one, is to grab a Sith holocron next time I go there, along with more Kyber crystals and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's really cool. And something I really like doing. Um, it's like one of my favorite vacations, just to go, on, just go to Disneyland and have a good time, hang out, look around, and do things there. Um, but yeah, that's my weird collection of like the Disneyland stuff and the Star Wars stuff. Um, oh, I almost forgot another Disneyland Star Wars thing here. It yeah. is, I got a little droid. This hit, I have it <laughs> earlier, earlier in the video. I was kind of messing with him, trying to get his head back on. Um, this guy's really neat. He, uh, connects directly to your phone. Uh, and you get like a little controller on your phone. You can play games with them on your phone and stuff too. Uh, it's kind of like how the sabers are. It's a builder droid. So like you can have a different head, different body, uh, two different body colors when you do the like the ball here. And uh, you can do like the antennas, different style antennas and that kind of stuff. And he rolls around and his head will stay in place kind of like BB-8 in the movies, uh, which is really neat. And I like it a lot. I like playing with this guy every now and then having a good time. And uh, last Star Wars thing. Uh, my girlfriend's mom got me for this this for Christmas, a little Darth Vader that holds your phone. Uh, uh, here's my phone. It's like so you can watch movies with the door cord. <laughs> Shit, holds your phone. It has a little charging port, I think, too, that like connects them. Or it came with a charger that like, you just holds it and you can charge your phone too. <laughs> Yeah, and then so that's about it for like the Star Wars collection and the Disney stuff. Um, I feel like I have more Disney stuff kind of hidden away. I have a lot of like knowledge from Disneyland, <laughs> like little dumb secrets and stuff like that. 
that I've learned over the years going to Disneyland and like little things to do, little nip tricks and all that kind of stuff that do there and like must do's. Um, like it's become like a thing that when we first get to Disneyland, the very first ride we always do is Space Mountain. Like you don't skip out on the Space Mountain, you hit it up first thing and it's really nice. Uh, and I do that every time. I've never <laughs> veered off from going straight to Space Mountain every time I go to Disneyland. Um, and it's back. Next thing I kind of, um, a lot of this kind of stuff is kind of just random weird nerd things that I collected. Uh, this next like set of collection of things I have um, meant a lot to me when it was kind of going on. I have a lot of Unis Ana stuff when Markiplier and Ethan were doing all their gimmicks there. Now I have like a Camp Unis Ana shirt and the Goddess Ana's long sleeve shirt. Uh, those are currently being washed. They are in the washer and dryer right now as we speak. Uh, so unfortunately I don't have those available to get our washer and dryers outside the apartment. So I don't have the availability to go grab those to show. But um, some of the things I do have relatively available. I did, do have their half jacket, the white and black half Unis Honest jacket. I like a lot. I, lo I love this thing. This thing's really cool. And then um, I have the wall flag, which is in my room under my desk. And then I got their uh, Death Day poster, which is a small little holographic poster with the spiral and the skull inside of it. Out of all the Unis Honest stuff, my favorite thing I have from them is their book. They only sold so many of these. They were limitedly available. And what I like the most about it is it's a white ink pen. I still have the ball on. I have not touched, messed with it whatsoever. Uh, it's white ink, ink pen and black pages. Every single page is black, which is really cool. I like it a lot little notebook and all that stuff and I have not touched it um, besides taking it out of the packaging and admiring it um, the only thing I ever want written in this is if I ever meet Markiplier or Ethan in person I want them to sign it and I'm just gonna keep it as is like that just their signatures and so on and so forth um, Markiplier is a big inspiration I'm sure I've said it on the channel before um, a lot of my friends know it too Mark Blair is a big inspiration for me when it comes to making YouTube videos. I really like his content and what he does, and that's what I want to do for a living is bring joy to people that watch my content, you know, get better at it, um, do different things, kind of go out and just do what I can. And Una's Honest was a great idea. I, I loved what they did with it, and it, I feel like it made a big impact on how I view YouTube, and I, um, I wish I could do more with it and uh, after everything it made me really want to do more there i don't um looking kind of back at it it's like that's where a lot of spike of our channel started was right after unis honest um was because that's when I, I really wanted to start getting content out there right away after just because of how inspired i was after they had deleted the channel but that's my weird assortment of things i have like a other things I have in here, like, um, oh, I almost missed a little Unis on a sticker still that I haven't put on anything yet. I got a couple of those. I got a few of those that came with my items, but like a couple of other little things I have. I have a Dungeons and Dragons bag, but just full of dice. Um, you know, uh, this was originally my dungeon master. His name was, his name's Nick. Um, he originally bought this bag for our group for anybody that came in that didn't have dice so he always had extra dice and when he ended up moving to new york um when we were living in arizona together when he moved to new york he gave me the bag because he was like here you're probably out of all of us the next person that would take up dming so here's my dice bag <laughs> so you can give it to players and new players that come in i thought it was really cool of them i still have it still use it uh every now and then when i dm i let people borrow the dice and whatnot the other thing is I'm I'm not into it as much as my roommates, but we do like Yu-Gi-Oh! Play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! every now and then. We're mostly playing like on Master Duel. The uh, these are all our throwaway throwaway collected cards, all of mine at least. Um, 
I don't have much value cards. Uh, I've gotten rid of most of them on the value cards just because, you know, times, times are tight and you need to make a little bit of money. Um, but I got rid of some of the value cards and I have a giant box of them still left. And I have a, which I wasn't able to pull out, but I do have a deck case that has uh, different decks in there that what I play with. I got Sword Soul cards and all this other stuff too. Um, uh, Tri Brigade, Blackwing, uh, Six Samurai, a whole bunch of different types of decks in there that I can just mess with. But yeah, that's basically the gist of like what I kind of collect. Um, <laughs> mo the weirdest thing out of all of them is the soda, but I did just want to talk about like all the other things I really like, like Kingdom Hearts, uh, the Disneyland stuff and all that too. So you guys can get to know me a little bit more. We're getting new subscribers to the channel and we really appreciate it. If you like this kind of stuff and you like more, feel free to comment, uh, share with me like what kind of items you collect or what kind of things that um, you might have a weird fascination with that you like to collect more with like with me with the Disneyland stuff I have a weird fascination with Disneyland and I wish I had more collected from it than what I do but but share that information with me let me know what you like to collect what you like to do um, and if you like this kind of stuff like comment subscribe or we'll possibly go over more things we'll probably have uh, if he wants to of course if Jason wants to do one of these like if he has items that he collects quite crazy that we could throw up there too but uh yeah, and I think, I think overall that's about it. Well, again, I want to thank everybody so much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Um, feel free to subscribe, uh, and like I said, leave a comment. Let us know how you're doing, and um, don't forget, we hit that 100 likes, which is kind of steep for our channel because we hadn't hit anything like that before. But if you had 100 likes on this video, I will crack open some of those sodas and give them a sip for everybody to watch there. I don't think I can convince anybody else to do it with me, but... <laughs> But we'll see where that goes. But thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.